this is almost like a, it's almost like a cold opening because I see my guest of honor, Brian K. Lewis. Wave if you can hear. Hey, me, Brian. everybody! How are you? There he is. All right, I'm so glad after what three years of doing this show. I think I wanted three to have years. you on Has the it been? show. Yeah, I, 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 we're I, on like episode 69. Which and... is my lucky number in more ways than one. Because, no doubt. because my birth year, right? I know it looks like 1989, but it's not. Um, and the year of the moon landing was my birth year. And that's what inspired that piece of art right behind me from a graffiti artist in uh, Malibu, California. And uh, that was the 50th moon landing. And that was my 50th birthday, 1969. So here we are. So it's fortuitous, John. I'm, I'm glad you didn't go in another direction. With hey, it's, it's, it's all a family out there. Program. It's <laughs> <laughs> we try and keep it PG here. So I'm so glad we're back in 1969. Brian. I mean, come on. <laughs> I don't know how you look 10 years younger than me when we were born the same year. Oh, it's an illusion. It's a lot of, I, I love your tree and your uh, fire, your Yule logs going there. I'm in. I asked Rob, uh, Roberto is going to be a couple minutes late. So I asked Rob, who did the Fire Island show with me. And I said, are you going to be around today? Can you help me out? He says, I love Brian Lewis. I would be oh. happy to do uh, oh my show gosh. with you and, and do Brian. So I thought. Is By the way, we've all done a few shows in Fire Island. Let me tell you. It's, uh, <laughs> it all is comes first. Is anybody you don't know in, well, you know, in Manhattan I real estate? Um, yeah, there's plenty of people I don't know in Manhattan real estate. Cause the secret sauce to me is that I, um, I love people. I love deals. I love marketing. I'm not always in love with our industry. I'm not obsessed. People think you must just love property. And actually I like sales. I like the people part. So yeah, the property is great when it's great, but I'm not like some people on this call might be obsessed with property and I know that might be strange coming from somebody who makes it their business for 22 years. I, I'm not obsessed. I'm obsessed with deals, connections, people, and marketing. That's what I like. And so I don't know everybody to answer your question. That's what I was getting to. I don't necessarily know everybody. There are people that I sort of look up to that I know, and then I, I kind of stay in my lane. If that it makes sense. Like what you like is the visceral reaction that buyers have when they see their home. So when they walk into an apartment and they start figuring out where furniture can go, and is that what really motivates you and what drives? Um, I would say what motivates me is the pictures I'm looking at above me, which are my daughters. And um, that's what motivates me. I do enjoy that. I enjoy when people come into a space and they light up. Um, I like when people can't leave anything. I like when it's so good you stay. It's like you're almost Netflix binging the property while you're in it. I always tell my sellers, it's important to make sure they don't leave. And you got to capture them with the way it looks, the way it feels, the way it's presented, but also the way it's priced. Something's got to keep them there. Because we're in the business of keeping them there. Like they, they've got to not want to leave at every, there's got to be some elements, maybe all the elements to make them not want to. I do enjoy a good negotiation too. I, I really like that part. I do. I like the engagement. I like when everybody's got some skin in the game and everybody's trying to make, make a market happen. I like the brokerage part quite a bit. I'm a little surprised to hear you emphasize the people part of it. I think of you as the consummate marketer and you may not know everybody in Manhattan, but everybody seems to know you. You are uh, out there. You make 50, Rob Bregman tells me he's made 50 videos with you just this year. And now he's making, as he said, a super secret edit of like the best of, you know, 2022 video that he's working on right now. And I thought 50 videos, you must really emphasize the storytelling. And that's what I put out in the promotion today that Brian Lewis storyteller, but what you're telling me is that you're not most comfortable in front of the camera. You're most comfortable taking people through and connecting with people 
in the spaces. But I would say, John, um, the camera is the person. And that's the way I look at it. If, if, you, if, you, if you take this and rewind quickly back to 1991 when I arrived in New York and looked like Kirk Cameron, um, <laughs> you with big puffy hair and whatnot and a lot of dreams, just straight up from Virginia, right out of college, you would find that whenever I booked a commercial, John, or anything, it was often speaking right to the camera with lots of copy. A lot of my fellow actors were sort of, you know, models and things. And I would, they would walk in and I'd be like, oh boy, I'm not going to get this gig. But when they gave me wall to wall copy words, I could stare right at the camera. I could get off book pretty quickly and I could read it right to the camera. So that camera was a person to me. So if I'm connecting with something, it's very good. I, I mean, at least that's how I feel. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not judging my work. I'm saying I feel really good when I connect with somebody in the camera. So connecting with the people is the camera. All right, I want to share with everybody, with everybody, the day I met you. I, I think it was the day I met you. I, I called you up and I said, I really love what you've done uh, at, um, you know, on your videos. And I, uh, what advice can you give me? And the advice you gave me was don't write a script. And I thought, oh, my God. I don't know if I can do that. I'm not a trained actor. And you said, you're going to become much more authentic if you don't write a script, just have three ideas in your head. And so I'm going to just share with everybody uh, the result of that. Oh boy, John, you're taking us back. I am, I am. <laughs> so here you are and you've arrived for the first time in Connecticut and you're walking into the house for the first time and you don't know anything about mid-century modern, the Harvard Five. You're just kind of going with the flow. And there's my mother. And she Love says, her. hey, Brian, Love let her. me take you around the house. And uh, you just wing it. This is magical. You're going to love this house. Let's go look inside. I'd love it. So anyway. By the way, I love your mom. I loved that day. We had so much fun. You had me driving a, a fancy car. I loved it. That That's adventure. Well, I think I was inspired by the fact that you could come out and just be yourself and walk through a house and say, so tell me about this. Oh, international style. Oh, curtain window. Oh, you know, and just, you know, with genuine enthusiasm about a property you'd not been in before. And I thought, okay. I guess I understand that it's really about selling a lifestyle. I don't need to walk through a house and say, we've got four bedrooms, two baths, you know, and, and I mean, I can let them figure out what the, what the facts are for themselves. It's how does it make you feel? And I think that's what I learned about you is how does a piece of real estate make me feel? And that's how I have to, that, that's what's got to come out. Would you say that's your secret? When, when you say we're in a feelings business though, I, I do. I, I, we are in a feelings business. You can get the the top analytical Wall Street, cold, you know, business school trained mind, and you get them in a room and they melt because of a view, because of a a feel, a quality. There's something about it. I like to touch things. You can see that in my videos a lot. I, I touch things. I just don't have a tactile person. And people give off a feeling too, right? And you play the room that you're in. You have a buyer that's quite cold. You might, you, you find what they light up about and you just kind of promote that feeling. I was at my daughter's school today and it's, we're at the end of the, the semester. So we're doing all these like holiday things. And so it was the dad's morning chorus sing-along. So I walk into the, early morning lobby at their school. And a mom comes up to me who happens to have the same name as my younger daughter. Her name is Daisy. And she's great, great woman and, and a great daughter. Both It comes with the name, I think. And uh, she said, Brian, I got to tell you, I see you very little and I see your videos a lot. And I watch them and I said, oh, thank you. You're the one. <laughs> I love it. And um, Daisy said, I I, I know sometimes they're magnificent properties and I know sometimes they're really not, but I must say to you, you always make that property. You find one thing, you find some dignity to lock into. 
you find a feeling in that place. And I, and I like that. And I know that sometimes it's a real stinker, you know, like a little two bedroom, this or that, or one bedroom. Who She goes, but you find something. And I, I, I do. And that's literally the only way I can sell it. And in this changed market, I told Daisy this this morning, I treat these properties like my kids because I have spent a lot of time trying to find out the feeling in them, John, trying to tell a story with them. And I do it for all my properties. And when the market, be it a macroeconomic thing out there, you know, whatever's going on in the market or not going on for that matter, I take it really personally when my stuff doesn't move. I, or if there has to be a number of price drops or whatnot, because I really, really, really have put a lot of effort, time, money into those homes and I do enjoy them. So not only do I take it personally as a, um, as a broker trying to move property, but as a, as a marketer and as someone who gets really attached to them, I, uh, I take that personally. Maybe that's, that's not good to say, but it's true. So some so of the you, agents have a background in acting. How would you, since we're talking about videos and, and being in front of the camera, how do you get people who are not as comfortable being in front of the camera to get comfortable? Uh, what advice do you have for someone who maybe trips over their words or can't really express how, how they feel about the apartment I, or house or whatever? That's a great question. I, I would work with somebody like Rob Bregman, who this is a commercial for uh, Flash Frame Productions. Rob has uh, become a dear friend. We have done over, I think he said over 600 videos together, stories, properties, movie tours. They're expensive. So I call them movie tours, right? Um, but that's, um, that's a great question. I, I think that there are plenty of actors that aren't comfortable in front of a camera, frankly. Um, and I mean, stage actors, you can put a camera in front of some of them. They're like, what? But I would say just it's cliche, but try to be yourself, try to um, find something friendly about it. The stakes are not that high. People want to capture a feeling and the essence. And sometimes we do it really well. And sometimes we don't. And um, if you have a great videogra videographer like uh, Flash Frame, they can make that property look great. And maybe they open on you and then they quickly go into the B-roll and then it's voiceover or something like that. You know, it's really just a matter of finding what's special about the property. Try to take your mind off yourself and try to focus on that property. Try to I tell the say, story. That's how it started with me. You said, it's okay. Don't write a script, just talk. And Rob sat me down, you know, stood me there and he said, just talk. And I said, but Rob, I don't know what to say. And he says, well, why don't you just tell me about, um, why don't you tell me about the, the approach? Oh, well, let me blah, 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 blah. How was that, Rob? He says, that's fine. Now let's walk in. And he just led me around my own listing and asked me a few questions. And I thought that was terrible. And he edited me to make me look good. And right. I think you're right that Rob Bregman will take anybody, that's his job, and make them look good and take out all the ums and ahs and stitch it together so that it's quick and snappy and upbeat and you know full of life and so you know once, once i found as you point out a good director a good editor uh that i had confidence in you know i could start making more videos right and and i always find that the personality of the place sort of takes me somewhere um Sometimes, like I have this townhouse at 17 East 92nd, that property video is more stayed and more, I don't know, reverent almost, because I had found out some really cool history points about it. And I wanted that to bring in the, I tried to visualize how the buyer might see that. Other properties, if it's got a really tall ceiling, I might even like sit on the fireplace or stand on it and touch the ceiling and jump just because I like that, number one, and number two, 53 years old, I can do that. I'm going to show that shit. <laughs> but I, but also like, it, I think that people like to be see, they like to see things more than they like to tell things. So it's more about uh, show me, don't tell me. So in that room with you and your mom and me in that mid-century amazing home that we were in, just the 
three people in the room in the space. If somebody did not want to suffer through a video with brokers talking, they can mute it. And I say that to people sometimes when they see a property, I say, Hey, if you need another tour, if you don't want to listen to me again, mute it and just watch a human being move through the space, watch the light change in the room. It just is a helpful reminder. And I think it is more alive than some of the, I don't know. Sometimes it's um, when I see those glorious properties with the sort of drone vibes. I love that too. But then you get in and it's just like a bunch of like weird music and it's moving through this very sexy house. That That's cool. But I need, I'm a people guy. I like talk to see to an me, image. Talk to me about when the house is not sexy. This Christopher street is not a sexy apartment, but this is the one that put you on the map. Well, you know what I was doing there? I was making fun of real estate videos. I was trying to make fun of them while we ran. And then People Magazine got a hold of the joke and they liked it and they talked about it. So, and and now I've adopted some of the things I've made fun of into my vernacular, which is kind of funny. Um, yeah, but, I mean, this there's nothing about this apartment to distinguish it from a thousand other apartments, a million other apartments in New York. Didn't have high ceilings. It's not a famous building. It's it's just an apartment, but you make fun of the of of how we talk about the foyer, or is it the foyer? You you make fun of uh, of yourself, and I oh, think for sure, like like lying on the bed there, right? Like there's uh, I I don't know I I like all that stuff. I've always liked I like to explore different things, and we've made some where we've we've tried to make little movies, like proper movies, one like themed, like one, I'm waiting for a date though. The one that got away, that was popular. Um, but I, I got to tell you, John, I get a lot of people that walk into a property and they expect, if it's a silly video, they'll expect that. And I actually change it during the showing. And I'm like, Oh yeah, you watched that. I was in a mood that day and they laugh, but then it becomes a very serious showing. It's like, it's a, it, it just, I don't, Sometimes they've watched the video and I can tell because they'll look at something I did and like, oh, are you like, are you gonna do that again? Like kind of vibe. Um I'm getting that now too. Some yeah. of my clients are like, I want you to make me a video, but none of that funny business. Mm. For sure. I have some that say, I don't care, just sell it. I don't care what you do. But that's what I meant about the reverence. Um, the one I did for uh, this property I sold is my biggest sale is $42 million. Hold for applause. Thank you. Um, no, but seriously, that was, that's, I need to, I need a few more of those right now. Um, but that video was very, was very sort of stayed and elevated and, and what majestic even, but for me, there's always a little humor in it. I just can't help myself, but can I tell a funny story? I, um, last week I was out with a, a, a celebrity client who, um, hasn't bought from me in a while, but he will. And he's a dear friend of mine. And I mean, he's known, like in the acting world, in the podcast world, in the theater world, he's one of the better talents of the world and one of the brightest lights. And he and his husband were with me and they're noticeable. People know them, right? So I'm walking down the street and we're on the Upper East Side and not one, but two people in the course of our day literally walked up to me and said, hey, Brian, I love your videos. And they hugged me. And I was like, thank you. And just to see celebrities see that, like I was loving that. I love, no one even clocked them. No one. That made me so happy. <laughs> so Brian, you touched on something a little bit ago that I think is the crux to sales, which is people want to buy, they don't want to be sold. So how do you change that message when you are working with different types of either buyers or showing people into your listings? How do you present it, you know, not necessarily the $42 million versus a one bedroom, but how do you judge which way the conversation goes? I just play the room I'm in. I mean, I can tell sometimes that people are just aren't into a property like anybody on this call that's an agent. You get a feel for it and you don't. So ever, no showings alike. If you know that they're tuning out, um, you just. I, I get them to talk about themselves a little bit if they will. It's hard when they have an agent because I don't want to overstep at all. That is your client, not my client. 
I might ask, how long have you been looking? How does this compare to things that you're seeing out there? Because they're seeing the whole array. I'm sort of in my own bubble um, of my property. And I always ask, like, how long have you been at it? Right. And if they say they've been at it a while, I'm going to say, well, that's a, it's, a, it's, you know, there's a lot more to choose from or prices have really turned in your favor. You're going to have a good moment like here. And then I'll get back to the property. But if I can get them talking about themselves a little bit, that's always helpful. But you can't always, they don't always sign up for that. Uh, but some people are open. More, it sounds like you're a little bit more clinical when there's another agent involved. Versus oh, for sure. Direct sale. Oh, for sure. Because I never want to step on my colleagues' toes ever, not even a little. And I actually try to treat my fellow colleagues as if they're the client because deals come and go, buyers come and go, brokers were forever. You know, we, we're, we, we're going to see each other over and over again. So I, I definitely, and I, I like to follow up I, and I love candor. I love candor. I, when people walk in and go, Hey, I like you. I like, I like the space. I'm not going to buy this. And here's why. Boom, 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 boom. I'm like, Whoa, that's amazing. Cause if I can control any of the things they just said and we can fix and recast awesome, but certain things you can't, they may not even just like the vibe of the place. And I, I get that sometimes people just don't like the feel of the building or something. So I just, I literally just, I, I don't know if I'm a seller. Like I know, I know, I know sellers don't want to hear that from a seller's agent. Um, but I'm, I, I like to match things, the energy. It just, you know, when it's going to happen, you can just feel it. You just know. All right. I want to switch gears. Yep. For five years, six years, you've been making videos. It's what you're comfortable with. You're a storyteller. Wait, hold on. Five or six? No. Five or six? No. Oh, hardly. Ten? Oh, How more. Long? Oh, for sure more. Um, the first video I ever saw made and did myself was, goodness, 2005? Like, Rob Bregman has a deep file on me that should never be seen, <laughs> but... No, I've been doing it for quite a while. Like, so how do you keep it? As, so question one is, how do you keep it fresh? 18 years later, you know, you go back into 45 Christopher Street and you're like, oh, I've, you know, I'm, how, how do I do something fresh, imaginative, a little bit? I don't ask myself edgy, that question. Funny? And John, yeah. sometimes, sometimes they're none of those things. <laughs> so it's, um, and sometimes it's, it's beautiful and it hits notes, but it didn't, it wasn't creatively resonating on me. I don't know. I'm a creator. I like to play piano. I like to write. I like to create things. I, I, I am a business guy. Sure. I, I, sure. I have to do that by default. That's the way we get paychecks, but I like to create stuff. I like this. I like this new mic I have. Does it sound okay? It sounds great. Oh, good. Hey, Rob. Hey, what's <laughs> up, my brother? Hey, uh, I'm are on 88. Are you in a cab? It's like you're in a pedicab. This is, a, this is an umbrella behind me. Oh, that's hilarious. I'm sitting, sitting on the corner of 88th and Lex. But I wanted to ask you, when you come into videos, maybe you guys covered this, but you, I have talked to Rob. I've talked to Mikey about. Yeah, sure. So, so Brian comes in. I say, what does he have prepared? And they're like, he doesn't. He just comes in. He walks around. He thinks for a little while. And then he's like, okay, let's go. And then and, and he says, in a lot of time, it's one take, maybe two. And then he's done. He's gone. Does that work for you? I mean, obviously you, I mean, like you have to have times where you come and you're like, that wasn't great. Oh, sure. Oh, absolutely. Or you're in a mood. Like you've had a seller just chew you out about something or you found out that your daughter, blah, 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 or you're, you know, you're, it's a life, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, Robert, you're, first of all, you guys don't know this about Roberto, great actor, an author, a fantastic father a sharp dresser, my neighbor, like we I look up to building. you. We ran into each other in the stairs today. <laughs> today. We're commiserating. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But, um, I, I really look up to you so much yeah, and, um, that's... and your videos are fantastic. You're like man about town. You're like elegant and this and that. I'm like, I'm such a dull. He likes mutual, he likes mutual. But, uh, but uh, I mean, I, I'm very impressed with your ability to just cut. And I love you have, there's something that you do that I find that is, really great you first appear on the camera and you there's a moment and you engage it draws you in it's very very good but there are a bunch of stuff that you do in your videos where you jump on the you know this jump on that have you had sellers say why are you doing that not or even do they once. Know, do they, 
or do they even hire you it. because they know you're going to do that? I think some of my sellers don't even watch. <laughs> they just want to. <laughs> That's close. not true. That is not true. I, I They're know. all watching. They're all know. watching. Um, but uh, They're all watching. I. I like it. It's my thing. I just enjoy sure. it. And if somebody says you can't do it. Oh, I did have somebody just the other day uh, at a little spot um, on 103rd Street. She goes, can you? Oh, no, 83rd Street. She said, can you remove the video? And I was like, oh, tell me why you said you liked it. She said, yeah, it makes the place look too good. I, um, I think we should take it down. It's a little smaller than it appears. And I said, you know, it's not really the video that's making it. It's the price. It's, uh, <laughs> let's be clear. The price is but, making it look really small. Right. But sure, let's take the video down. Let's do that. Um, I don't know, uh, Roberto. I, 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 I can't explain it. I like sometimes it really, you channel it and it comes through, you know, and sometimes it just, it doesn't. I, I can't explain it. Like I just, when the camera's on and I know the stakes are high, I love it. I used to do this show with um, Sarah Gore, uh, Open House New York, quite yeah. quite a bit. We still do it once in a while, um, and I love it. And then she had me doing this live show called uh, New York Live, and we were—I think they're on midday now, but I don't even think they do a real estate segment. Um, well, if they do, they haven't invited me back. But they—they they did one for a while. We did it from five to six every single Wednesday, and for a good run there, when my kids were really young, I would go on. And I—I—I I, I, I just I'm a I'm a little bit of an adrenaline junkie for the camera. So when that red light is on, and they're like, "You're on," or you're in your ear, and you're live all over, I get off on it. And, and I, I go on those news shows like CNBC or uh, CNN or just the talking head shows, Fox business. Some, yeah. Yeah. I love it. Like I'll get my three data points in my head and I'll start. And I really, but is that your preparation for a property too? You come in, you got, I've got to communicate these three things in this entire thing. For sure. Yeah. Like, like I want to, I will like, sometimes I have gone to a seller. And I've said when they're invested in it and they do care about the video, what are the things about your home that drew you to it? And what are the secrets of your home that no one will ever know unless they buy it? Like what, and, and what will you, what will you regret? I don't say if I don't ask you now, like if you watch this and it's not present and I haven't put a spotlight on it, um, what will you be sad about? And sometimes they give you like, they're like, you know, I really love, at night, this or that, or when the sun hits the right, this or that, because homes are personal, right, guys? This is personal. But do, but do any of them say, oh, and you've got to feature those bookcases I made, you know, like 17 <laughs> years ago. And you're like, you're like, OK, OK. <laughs> okay. <laughs> when I talk so, about renovating, I'll point to. Them. So, so, yeah, Ryan, oh, oh, let's let's talk about the evolution. So after. 18 years of long form videos, three minute videos. In the last year, you've been making a lot of reels. And I noticed you're making fast fact, fun fact, fun fact Friday. Friday, FFF. Fun fact Friday. That's yeah, he, very different from making property videos for your client. Where, I don't, it, it's additive though, John. It's not substitution. It's additive. Why? So, why, because, why? because if, if I make a video for my client and they and the 10 people who consider their place are the only 11 people on the planet who see it, it worked. My client's happy that I made a video that told the story of their place and the 10 people who were interested in it saw it and, and used it to consider the property you know, from their home af after the showing. But it's a whole new objective when you start to do uh, fat, uh, fun fact Friday, it's not about your properties. Are you trying to communicate to New York that you are a New York expert, that you are a, like a tour guide? You know, I just, I was getting bored uh, to be clear. And also you ready for this? I was like, oh, social media, I'll just post my videos. And everyone's like, well, your videos are letterbox and that's great. But the social world is vertical. And they're like, well, we'll just turn them. And it just cut everything off. And then it looked like 53-year-old dude trying to be cool, which is kind of what I'm doing. But um, I have some great 
younger people that are in my group that help me out. And they're all over the socials. And I talk to the youngest people I know who are my niece and nephew in Virginia, who are all, you know, high school students. And I asked them what, what they like and what would be interesting. And they said, I don't know, just you run around doing stuff and don't worry. And maybe you go vertical with it. And uh, so I tried it and we're just sticking it out there. And I think I have, I don't know, somebody told me I have a thousand followers on uh, <laughs> TikTok. I don't know. I'm, I'm well, certainly. You've got, you've got 2,200 on Instagram and you've got 1,063 on TikTok. Look at me. I am so freaking cool. Whatever. I don't, I mean, like, I don't know. I don't know. So they help me They and they, they laugh at me appropriately, but I feel like some, some, my, 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 my millennials, they said, um, you know, people want to see more of what you do. People want to see more of your life. And I got to tell you, I don't love all that stuff. Like look at me and shrimp and Barbados or uh, my daughter and me, like maybe a little bit of that. I'm just, I don't know. So we, we pepper in other things to keep the content moving. And I would say that that's more a commercial for me. Um, and I would say the videos are the commercials for the properties, but you know, we, the way we market guys, um, tell me if you think this is right. I do. I feel like you're always kind of marketing yourself as well. You're, you're not just selling that home that you're selling. You're also selling the way you sell. So the neighbors might get a hold of it and they might go, I, want, I kind of want that vibe for me or wow, you got multiple bids on that. No one else is moving stuff. Wow. Um, let's, let's, let's sign up for that. So I always say when you're marketing, I mean, rarely do I market and mail or, or connect or social or anything, a property to someone go, I'm buying that because of that. It's usually they get a part of the energy and then they're buying you really. But I, I will say this guys, the, the, remember that story I told you about the $42 million place, right? Guys, I'll tell that until I die. Uh, until I sell the $200 million place at 50 West 66th street that I I'm going to do. Um, $200 million. Can you believe that? And they're paying 4%. That is an $8 million commission, ladies and gentlemen. That That's incredible. Um, but I, the, the story- you see how quickly goes, he did that math? I, oh, I did it fast. I'm good with percentages, <laughs> especially when they're four or six. Um, the, uh, the, the buyer for that place was a, a gentleman from Australia who told me, his grandson saw the video. Don't know how he saw it, but he saw it and showed it to his grandfather. His grandfather saw it and they said, we're flying to New York next week. Anyway, let's go see it. They saw it. They bought it. Was that 111 West 57? Uh, 157 West 57. The 77. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Yeah, the that 77th was floor. a spectacular video, though. That is so well done. Thank you. It's Thank you. So professional. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and that um, yeah, that that's led to a lot of stuff. Like I I and then I met this other video guy who makes movies, like real, he's a real filmmaker. And we made this right before COVID, uh, we made this sort of commercial really about me and my daughters, but more about real estate. And that is running in all the cabs and in movie theaters in New York, and that's getting a lot of attention. So yeah, that, that was Brian, fun. Brian, yeah. that particular video has a production quality that is outrageous. It looks like something looks like the, like one of the previews before you watch a movie. Like it is so that is also the quality of that is very well done. It's very sweet. It tells a lot about you as a person, your family, who you are. I thought it, it was really well done. It's got to be a couple of years ago now because Berlin days. Are tiny. Well, I know, you know, Rob, we shot that and then they closed the city down. So wow. we couldn't run it and I wasn't going to put it anywhere. So I, I promised everybody, including myself, we would, you know, dog ear the funds for it. And we'd throw it out there after COVID when people were taking cabs and going to movies again. And um, yeah, it, it launched this fall. So uh, I'm, I'm pleased with it. And, but yeah, the girls right. are like two years younger. It's funny though. I look younger. So that's all I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> not really. But so um Go. Yeah. Brian, do you feel, do you feel like the, the additive, these, the, the, you know, the TikTok and all this stuff, do you feel that it's filling a blank in 
in your marketing sphere of what you're trying to achieve. Like I, th- I find so, so many of the things that are on TikTok and stuff like that, the brokers do, I just find it so ridiculous and nonsensical and a waste of my time to even watch. But some of it is informative and some of it is like, at least it informs me about them perhaps. For sure. But I, 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 don't, I don't know. Well, I, jury's out, right? So it's, it's, is it additive? I like doing it. Um, I get a lot of attention for it, from it. Like people are like, oh yeah, you're in that space. And I don't think I'm doing anything. Oh, correct me if I'm wrong. You guys can judge. I don't care. Um, it's, uh, and that's the other thing, guys. Do, do, don't worry about judges because we're the harshest critic we'll ever have, right? Just do it. Just do your, do your stuff. There's plenty of people that hate it. There are people that will actively email me and call me and they say the nastiest stuff. And then there are people that call me and say the nicest stuff. And I just decide they're the same types, right? They're the same, just different extremes. Um, of course, we like the nice stuff. But the judges out there, I just, I don't know. I just feel like saying when I'm in a pitch or something, I'll say, and, and, and I do the, you know, I do some TikTok. I do this and that and the other. I try to be, I don't think I go over the top on that stuff. I think it's rather informative. I'm not looking for agreement. I'm just saying I, that's my thing. I, I'm not, that's not my brand to be that over the top. I, I like to be a little silly, but I like to be reverent to the property and the people and I'm respectful. I, I just, your kids are watching this stuff, right? That's, that's the way I look at it. Do any of your uh, sellers say, I don't want a video? Uh, it's, it's funny. Uh, we, we've already covered that, um, but you were late. Sorry. That's all Sorry. right. Sorry, man. It's all right. You told me you're going to be late because yeah, you had a big pitch. Did you get it? I hope you did. It wasn't a pitch. It was a showing. Oh, hope, hope they bought it. Um, no, I've never had. Now watch. Somebody will say, you know, I don't, you know, and I, frankly, it'd be a relief because they're expensive, right? These videos, <laughs> they add up. Yeah. But um, yeah. it is part of my brand. So I do like it and I like to have the content and uh, I can. Yeah, it's, I, I I feel it when I haven't made one lately. Isn't that weird? Like I'm kind of jonesing. Uh, it's been a while. We got the holidays going, and are people really trying to figure out? Do I list in January? So I have these people that are all going to list in the spring. We talked about that today earlier, yeah. Robert. And uh, and I'm like, well, let's get that video going because I want to get that in January. <laughs> like I need Daddy needs his fix. So let's let's have that ready. Um, let's talk about 2023. What do you see yeah. coming up in 2023? I, I see everybody's talking about a current lack of inventory. And because a lot of people are locked in on low rates, we think that there's going to be a reluctance for anybody who doesn't have to put their place on the market uh, might might wait. Uh, so we think there's going to be a lack of inventory in 2023. How are you adjusting your business? I, I think Manhattan already has a lack of inventory, frankly. We're really, really tight. And that's surprising that it, trying to create that immediacy in the buyers is wow. uh, is tough. Uh, price is one thing, putting it out there, having the alternate media uh, advertisements, the way we're doing it, finding different paths. Um, I talked to Robert Bregman about it, this today, and he said, look, we're busy because a lot of people, their places are lingering and they're needing more, I don't know, marketing tricks or different colors to bring to the property to show their seller. You know, you have to work harder in a slower market to, in a different manner. I feel optimistic about the spring one, because I feel like that's the only way we can get through it all. Um, this fall is tough. I find it. I found this fall for, for, we got deals done. We got them done. I found it actually rougher than the recession, the great recession when the market stopped after Lehman. I just find it. it it's almost like we, we, it, these rates, right? These rates and the mood um, we were going at a pretty good clip. Manhattan, never quite got back to 2016. That was our peak. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, John, Connecticut maybe never had it as good as during COVID. Am I correct? Right. And, and, and in our generation, maybe never will. And I hope that's not true. I hope that we all thrive. Um, but I, you know, everyone's like, oh, the, the, you know, the it's changed all over the country. And I'm like, well, Manhattan never quite got the post COVID party. Everybody said the roaring 20s were going to come back and we're going to have a decade of rah-rah. And that decade lasted about you know, five months. And, and now we're sort of 
in this weird space. And it, it is complicated. If 2023 is going to be characterized by a period of low inventory, historically low inventory, and you're saying you're already seeing that in New York. For and sure. you're primarily, tell me if I'm wrong, primarily a listing agent. And there's less listings to be had. Do you provide the same value add? I mean, we began the conversation where you said, I'm a really good buyer's agent because I connect with people and I go through the place and I can, and I, you know, and I like talking to people and taking them on their journey and their, you know, and, and, and working with them on their dreams. Am I, I'm, I'm, I'm putting words well, in your mouth. No, but. it's, it's fine. Over the past, gosh, five, six years, I've really built my buyer business bigger and I've always had great success with buyers because they take you in other neighborhoods that you don't necessarily close in. Sometimes it's a great gateway into a new price point or whatnot. Um, so yeah, I work. I was out with my my buddy just last week. I told you the story, and I have a great uh, colleague named Linda who works with me with buyers. That's her dedicated job. So when you work with me, you work with Linda. It's like because she's so good at it, and people connect with her. So I have that covered. I've got it covered, but I would argue that when you're in a market with lower inventory and fewer deals, you need a real marketer because you have a dedicated buyer's agent, Linda, and sure. after your client, your collective client has identified something that they're interested in, then you, then you participate. Oh, for sure. And so they, they, they do a lot of the, you know, I check in, I guide and, uh, and then I come in for the second showing, certainly the negotiation, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm there, but for the the litany of seeing a lot of things and sort of we, weaning down the properties, that's that's all day long, Linda, and she's pretty great. So tangential to that, how what's the secret sauce of getting a $42 million listing? You know, I need to learn that better because I can tell you how I got that one. You ready for it? Do you remember in New York... Uh, there were these, this ride service called Via. Do you remember that? Yeah. The yeah. great thing about Via is they were clean. They were big, they were SUVs and there were five bucks, like anywhere you wanted to go. And if you had a minute, you could sit in the back and you could work on your phone and charge and feel like some rich guy about town in this fancy car. And you would get to your destination, five bucks Via. Well, I, I don't love to sit with my phone all the time. I just really don't. And I, this nice lady got in and she had a dog and we were talking. She had this great little dog. And I heard her speaking to someone on the phone in French. So we were talking and I, I, I lived in France as a kid for a little bit. And uh, so I, I, I spoke French with her. We start just hitting it off and she's gorgeous. She's just this wonderful sort of regal Upper East Sidey lady. And we hit it off. I didn't talk about what I did. She, she, and at the end of the ride, she got out and said, what do you do? And I said, oh, I sell real estate. She goes, I tell you what, I've got a friend named Tony who's at his apartment now. He's in from London. He, they can't sell that place and he needs to sell it. Do you, do you know the building? I was like, do I know the building? You know, 157 West 57. And she said, you, you should go meet him. I said, when's good? And she called him and he said, how's four o'clock? This was two o'clock. I'm in a via. So I called my associate who was helping me and I said, get me a, a pitch book, get me this, run the comps, this and that, put them in my notes, da, 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 da. And I went in and I, I met Tony and I went upstairs and he poured wine and whatever I drink. If they're going to offer it, I'll drink it. Right. If they're having it, I'll have it. That's the way I roll. And uh, it was probably like, like he had a butler. Like it was like, it was out of this world. And, and he's pouring this wine and I, quickly decided, well, I'm never getting this shit. This is like, this is out of my league. So I'm drinking the wine. I'm like, this is freaking the best glass of wine I've ever had in my entire life. He's like, do you want more? I'm like, yes. Cause I decided I'm not getting the listing. So I'm just gonna enjoy this great wine. So we're drinking this wine. We're hanging out. We're talking. I met his wife, his kids. And I said, why are you moving? And he said, look, I've got all the toys. I've got the jet and the, and the, the yacht and the houses and this and that and the other. And his little kids came running in, toddlers, on the 77th floor, and they ran right to the glass. And my heart, like, it kind of popped out of my chest. He's like, you got nervous, right? I said, yeah. He goes, that's why I'm moving. That's why I'm moving. It, 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 uh, it frightens me when they do that. 
I was like, all right, let's do it. So I met that seller in a via and that's how. So put your goddamn phones down and talk to the people. Because last time I checked, the money's on the street. I thought, you, said you, I thought you were going to say the kids came running in and go, I saw your video. No, oh, that'd be even better. That'd be even better. Um, Can you but, tell me something? Just curious, a brief history on that. Who, what was it listed for before? What did you list it for? And how quickly did it sell? I have to look it back up. Uh, like 50 to 50. I don't know. It was something crazy. And this was, look, already was like 2018, 2019. Everyone's nostalgic for the past. Our market sucked those years. Do you remember that, Robert? Yeah. 16 was great. 17. Then it started going down, 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 down. Then this thing called COVID happened. And then we went back up. We only caught up to like 2019, 2018. So I, I, that market was tough. So we brought it barely down. He had, he had already brought it down with that agent and he, that time was up. So I grabbed it, did a whole campaign of marketing on it. And I was relatively new at Compass at the time. So I really got a lot of love and they threw a lot of fertilizer on it. And, uh, and it was effective. So I think we were on, I think I hit it that spring and, and I think I found my buyer in July, August and we closed so quickly, so quickly. So, so, so let's talk about, again, getting back to what John was talking about, 2023. I personally, and we were talking about this at the stair, on the staircase today, is I personally, regardless of where rates are, et cetera, and I think there's going to be some pain next year still, I think the demand is out there. And as long as there's something to sell, it's going to be busy. And, I, and as I said, I think the sellers are in complete control. As long as they price right, there is going to be serious activity because the demand will be there. Yeah, I, I see it too. I feel like if there can be an immediacy with the buyers, why? If they believe the market's going to go down more, why buy now? Why buy now? So I, I listened to my friend Noah Rosenblatt on Urban Digs. I don't know if you guys know, plug for Noah. I think he's been on your show. Um, if, if, I did, if I heard him correctly, he's saying that this is a bottom. Like he's calling this a bottom. So I'm telling all of my buyers, this is your opportunity. And yesterday's increase with the Fed exchange rate, you know, that's all baked in already. My mortgage friends tell me that's already baked into yeah. the products. And if you have a private banking relationship, and 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 your your funds are all at a certain bank. You you can do pretty well with with the banks, you know. And I always say, marry the price, date the rate. Right? You can always refi, and that is not original, but that's true. I marry hate that, that phrase, price. but it it is correct. It's so true. Marry that price. You can always you you can always refi, right? So we got to get that immediacy going. The thing is, that once everybody starts coming in, everybody's going to want to come in. Oh, for sure. Because everybody's a group of lemmings, right? Everybody. Yeah. They follow right the now is the Right now is the greatest moment. If someone is to be making an offer right now, your offer gets so much attention because it's the only offer out there. And the sellers know that if they don't sell now, they might not be closing until April, May, June. For sure. And if they want to wait, pull it off for three months, wipe the days, come on in March. If you get a deal by May, June, July, August in New York, that's yeah. an August yeah. closing. That's yeah. a lot of carry. That's a lot of carry. And I think there's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of pent up, not just pent up buyer demand. There's pent up seller demand to move, to do whatever they need to do in their life. Like with the lack, any time in the history of all the, the markets that we've seen, when there has been a lack of, of volume, a volume has decreased. It has always been followed with tremendous volume subsequent to that in the like six months later, a year later. And there just has to be price compression. For sure. And, and some of my sellers have really done that already. And they are still pondering like, why, why are we getting one offer? This is a silly price. Like literally a price that I can't believe I'm letting it go. I had one seller say, can we put a clause in the contract that says when they go to sell it, they'll call me first because I love this home and I would buy it back from them. I just can't carry it right now. And I, I, yeah, because they know that this is, if it's a great home, it's priced right. And no one's grabbing it. Like really it's well-priced. I've got a few of those right now. It's just that Mark, Richard Arnstein said, it's a buyer's market with no buyers. <laughs> That's it. How is John, how are you feeling in Connecticut? How is it up there? 
You know what? I think uh, we, we went from 250 sales to 500 and we're back down to 250. So on the one hand, it feels kind of lousy. We're like, oh, well, you know, we're, we're down by 50% since last year. But you know what? We're still having the second or third best year of the last oh, dozen. I love uh, it. So, you know, I, I really can't complain. I also think just like in New York, uh, you didn't see 20% uh, price appreciation. We didn't either. We saw 10% you know, each year for a couple of years. So we didn't see stratospheric price increases and we're not seeing uh, that much of a correction right now. I think we're seeing a 10% correction after maybe a 25% up, maybe back down, maybe 10%. Uh, and I, I, I see a, uh, an unwillingness on the part of sellers to discount further at this point. We'll see in the spring, but right now, a lot of my sellers are saying, I'm patient. Let's hold the line and see what happens in the spring. Are you anticipating a bunch of inventory coming in yourself? No, uh, we've got only 53, right? From a high of 250 on the market, we've got 53 properties, single family homes in, in this town. If, if we get from 50 to 100 in the spring, that's still not enough inventory. 100 is still, you know, 40% of what's normal. So that's why I do think sellers hear that and they're unwilling to discount further. I just had right. a conversation with a $5 million seller. He says, do I have to discount further in the spring? And I said, I, I don't think so uh, yet, but we don't right. know. We don't we'll, know. we'll see in the spring. We'll see where we are. Ask me February 1st after bonuses get announced all over Wall Street, which I'm told are not going to be very good Uh you may have to discount. You you may. You last year, said, quarter, go ahead. Go ahead, Brian. Sorry. My last year, quarter one last year, I smelled it. I was encouraging everyone to list in January, and that was the right move. And that's counterintuitive to the season. It's snowing. There was an Omicron spike, if you might remember. It's cold. It's miserable. But I know that the private school letters come out. February. And I said, they're all going to be out looking for those three bedrooms. And these interest rates are going to spike, I'm told. So let's jump on. And we did. And that was, I got, I got several deals done. Quarter one last year was the absolute best price for Manhattan for me um, in the post COVID era. That, that was great. And I'm hoping quarter one's good this year too. I, I know we don't have those interest rates. I know we don't, but I'm looking for something, looking for something. You are, to get you are yeah. New York through and through. Roberto and I spent a lot of time talking to agents around the country. And I'm going to remind you that when you went to Compass, you made a video, why did I go to Compass? And one of the biggest reasons you said was, I want to be part of a national brand. I see the movement going where you've got to be part of a national brand. You've got to be connected with agents all over the country. How is that going? Are you, you're still known as a New York guy. And well, you're for sure, splitting there's splitting your time between two markets. There so, is, whenever I travel, I can always find a compass office. So tomorrow I'm going to Palm Springs. I'll stop in those offices, going up to Mammoth Lakes to ski, and we'll stop in the Sierra Nevada office. Um, we will go to Los Angeles and I'll stop in a few of those offices. Just why put, does that matter to your clients? I don't know. I can write my trip off. I could, <laughs> you <know. laughs> but you know, I do, I do, I do meet people that way. Right. I, um, I, I do people come all the time to the New York office, particularly from Miami. From Are our, you getting our, referrals? From oh, for sure. Coming in or for are sure. you sending, Both. Uh, are you sending referrals out? Both. I sent a $16 million referral to Miami two weeks ago. He's working with my buyer and I received a $2 million buyer referral from a different Miami agent recently. The, the Compass referral network is robust. It's real. It's it's great. And I get a lot of emails from around the country from different age, from Nashville to Austin to name place here, uh, Aspen. And the, and the videos help with that? They say, well, because oh, they know like who I, I am. They, they see me, right? If they see me, they see me, right? right. But um, there's another Brian Lewis in San Diego Compass. So we sometimes get each other's emails. And he's, uh, I always say like, we should do a team like West coast, East coast, let's go <laughs> Brian Lewis. We got you covered, but I do, I do like, um, I, I like that. It's big. I like that. It's, um, you know, I think a lot of, a lot of companies have been inspired, um, by sort of the movement 
And I think we are, our, our business, our, our industry is better for it. I do. I think the industry is an, as a whole has, has come up, but I loved Halstead. I loved Brown Harris, um, you know, at the time one and the same, but um, I, Diane Ramirez to this day, one of the best, Michael Goldenberg, probably the best manager ever. Tony Oakley here is pretty, pretty close, but Michael's, he's a hard ass New Yorker and he just berated me until I, you know, beat it into my DNA. So I, I loved that time in my life and without them, I wouldn't be where I am. And I'm also looking for other things. Like what's next? Like, where am I going to go with my business? Where because are you I get gonna bored. Go? Are you always going to be in New York or are you going to split your time between the down South and New York? Like, well, Ohio? you know, I'd love, I'd love that, but um, I, I'm You're not a Carolina in, boy, Carolina, Virginia. Virginia. That's it. Robert and I both from Virginia, but I was you going raised, back. Good memory. You're going to end up in back Charlotte. in Virginia. Well, we have an office in Charlotte. Uh, I don't have a team there, but we have an office there. I don't know. I'm not there. My kids are in school here. They're entrenched. My girls are New York girls. And I like that because it's the opposite of the way I was raised. And I'm enjoying watching that and uh, see where that goes. So until until then, I'll probably just stay right here. We have a little spot in Southampton, not so far from Robert. We have a lot of similarities. Right yeah, we do. And um, yeah. I, I we have an office there and I, I might, I might play a little bit out there i don't know i i i don't know i just go and i'm sort of like forrest gump i go where it feels good and if i'm welcome i do well and make some videos and i try to i try i do have visions of 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 a bigger thing but uh i don't love managing people i just love the people of real estate like like deals and stuff i like to market and be out there in front of the camera and put it out there I don't love sitting around a conference table directing people. I just, I, my soul gets like small and then I have no creative energy left. So I got to figure that out. So work in progress. Well, maybe you need to ally yourself with a great manager. Because yeah. that, it seems to me that that would be the way to expand your business, to make more Brian out there, right? How about, how about yeah, Melissa? Is she free? Team? Melissa's great. I'll hire your wife. She's awesome. She's good. Taken. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah, I've thought about it. I've, I'm, um, I've actually looked at various things and I've been, I've been sort of looking at some resumes for that. Um, but I noticed, you know, during these softer markets, right. I warned my group. I said, the sellers have nothing but time. And if the deal's not happening, they're going to nitpick on the listing so hard. Every a semicolon, they're going to look for, why don't we reshoot that video? And it wasn't as sunny as it should have been. They're going to rearrange the deck chairs on the Titanic, right? And, and hope that that changes the course of action. So they do that, but I find that I do that. Like I'm calling my herd a little bit. Like I'm looking at everyone around me. You have more time and you want to be busy. So you're trying to be productive. How can I outreach a video better? How can I tell the story quicker, faster? How can I make that speak to the social media world? How can I stay relevant and stay productive and make my things pop and still maintain enough energy to connect with the brokers and the buyers and et cetera. So it's always moving and always asking and trying to learn and watch people like you guys, like watch what you're doing. And, and see if any of it resonates with me. Yeah. I mean, a Thursday is the day that Roberto and I forced ourselves to get out of, you know, get away from our clients and go talk to other agents like yourself. Force us to go talk to Vero Beach, talk to Palm Beach, talk to LA, find out how other people are thinking and get a read on the market. So Thursday is the day that we do that. Monday is the day that I connect with the people I work with and find out what's going on in my local market. So, you know, I think that uh, it would be difficult for me to work solo and be creative like you are every day coming up with new material. I've got to come up with a routine where Monday I work with my people and Thursday I work with Roberto. And, you know, that, that, that's the structure that makes me more productive and that's good. forces me out of my comfort zone. John, what's your like morning vibe? What's your, what's your, what's your situation? Like, are you an early riser? Are you, are you doing like infrared saunas and ice plunges? What do you do? What do you do? 
No, I, I get up and I grab the dog and uh, Melissa and we head <laughs> off into the woods. Wait, hold on. And the dog, can... comma, Melissa or the dog? <laughs> the dog and, and Melissa. Yeah, and we go walking <laughs> Thank in. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, we go for a hike. That's great. Hike. Oh, my gosh. That's great. Yeah. It's amazing. I like to get up and start. The first thing I do when I wake up is I reach for this little spiral notebook and I just put pen to paper and I just start getting all the madness out, like all the weird thoughts, the pollution, the good, the bad, the ugly. It's a book that should never be read by anyone because it looks like, <laughs> what is this? And my daughters have looked at it before and I'm like, okay, don't look at daddy stuff because this is just like ranting. But I find that somehow that it sets my intention a little bit. And then I like to, um, sort of get my girls to the bus stop. I see Robert at that time. And then I like to do something physical. I like to get out of my head and, and sort of work out and do it and then put on some real estate drag and go to it. That's, that's kind of the role. That's kind of the, the thing, but I, I find myself needing more and more creative time. So I'm going to make space for that in 2023 more, uh, play the piano more, write the songs a little more, maybe to get into a little voice class again, Maybe do a little bit more of this, put this good mic to use. I don't know. I just feel like if it's going to be a little slower, I'm going to just try to bring more creativity to it. So. Great idea. Yeah. That's a great thought for 2023. Now, before we yeah. leave, I just want to go back over to Rob Kuhar in Fire Island and ask him, when does the ferry stop running to Fire Island? How much time do we have? before the season is over in Fire Island. The, the ferry, luckily for, for my towns, it runs year round. It only runs twice a day. So you've got to plan accordingly. Um, however, it is getting colder. And when the bay freezes over, the ferry does not run. I have been sitting on the dock with my mother of a certain age as the ferry was trying to get in through the ice and decided to turn around and go straight to Bayshore. And I was stranded on Fire Island. Um, so just be mindful of coming out. <laughs> hey, hey, Rob, is it true that there's a school bus that runs up and down the beach? There is a school bus. Uh, there is a school on Fire Island. Uh, there's about 10,000 houses. And there's only about maybe 12 kids from the island that go to that school. They actually have to bus people in from the mainland. But think about the dollars per student. It's it's the highest dollar per student for a public school in New York. For Amazing. Just that That's something, right? Amazing. If you if anybody has never been to Fire Island, please come out. There's always a desk for you. I don't care what company you work for. Oh, make you work. Uh, That's great, you. Rob. I love it out there. It's so special. So special. I've never been, so I'm going to take you no, on. You're either. saying I can come in December? <laughs> Wait till <laughs> summer. Summer's okay. good. Okay. <laughs> John, you have a private island, I do believe. Is that accurate? Yes. Yes. So why yeah. don't we go to your private island, courtesy of your private ferry? That sounds like fun. Let's do a podcast there. We're going to, we're going to do a podcast. We're going to have a great party next year. Melissa is on board. We're going to have some great Island parties. I love that. I'm there. Totally there. I would love that. Thanks guys. This oh, is yeah. Brian. Thanks Thank so much you. for coming. Oh my gosh. Thanks for inviting me, Roberto and, and, and John and uh, happy and Mary and all of it. Yeah. Whatever you celebrate, have fun and uh, enjoy it. Take time. Put your devices up, man. Put them down and look up. That's where the fun is. Great, great idea. Yeah, Johnny, good job, Skipper. Sorry for being late, guys. Oh, it's pleasure seeing you, Rob. See ya. Bye, guys. All right. Thanks, See you Thanks, later. everybody, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye.